guys, Mike here with Crazy Moto, and today we're replacing the rear wheel bearings on my 2010 Chevy Silverado. Hey. Guys, so we're here at the shop at Mr. Tire in California, Maryland, and today we are going to be doing the rear wheel bearings on my 2010 Chevy Silverado 1500 work truck. Now, my particular vehicle is rear wheel drive only, and it does have the rear drum brakes. So we're going to go ahead and get started by pulling off the wheels. All right, guys. So. Here we are at the uh, little side cart and I have all the tools that you will need to do this job as well as some extra ones just in case. So um, in order to get the lug nuts off, um, you're going to need a 22 millimeter socket. I have that on my 3 8 Milwaukee Impact which has more than enough torque to break the lug nuts off of uh, a Chevy 1500 if they're torqued properly to the specification. If yours are possibly over tightened, you might want to get a breaker bar, but my lug nuts are torqued to the factory specification, so this will be more than enough to take all of them off. In terms of sockets, you'll want, uh, and I have a various collection of them, but uh, you'll want a 13 millimeter socket for the rear diff cover bolts. So if your truck was in the rust belt or it's super rusty or it's in bad shape, you'll also want to have a 13 point or sorry, a 12.13 um, if the bolts are rusty and misshapen. And if they're really bad, you'll also want a 12.12 millimeter that you can hammer on uh, to break them loose. I've had to do that on a couple Chevy S10s um, and that usually does the trick. If your bolts are really bad, you'll wanna get one of the impact drivers um, that break them loose. That works as well with the socket on the end and that'll, that should take care of your diff bolts. Otherwise, you'll have to perform major surgery, which we'll cover in another video. Um, you'll want, you'll need an eight millimeter socket, most likely on a quarter inch ratchet. Um, and that's because the rear carrier pin retaining bolt is an eight millimeter. You'll also want an eight millimeter wrench because at some point you won't be able to move this between this and the in the carrier bearings so you'll have to finish it off with the wrench next thing you'll need 3 8 ratchet to pop your drain plug most drain plugs on most differentials have just a 3 8 inch drive uh, square set in them to remove them next thing you will want is something to make sure you're everything is torqued to spec so right here i have um, this matco digital 3 8 torque adapter this thing is awesome it has 10 different settings you can set the torque newton meters foot pounds whatever you want it's all digital it'll beep when you're ready it's pretty amazing otherwise on this side we have just the atd click style torque wrench can't go wrong with one of those You'll also need a pry bar usually to get the axle out. Um, if you have to put a ton of force on, you probably did something wrong, but it helps to have one of these just to like pop it out of the seal. So next you'll want a bearing and seal driver. This one is from Performance Tool and it is ready to go. It has different um, different size pucks as you can see and they just bolt into it and you smack that in with a hammer fits perfectly over the bearing in the race so you don't damage anything driving it in another thing you'll want is a die grinder in order to clean up the surfaces never hurts to have a hammer and you'll want a magnetic pickup tool to pick up the c-clips out of the axles to remove them last but not least Actually, probably most important is you will need a slide hammer to remove the rear wheel bearings. Um, most of these are at available um, to rent from an auto parts store. Um, 
you can also buy them online like I said everything in this video that I used parts and tools and fluids will be linked in the description last but not least you will also need your synthetic 75 w90 synthetic gear oil for your fill up when you're done that's what chevy calls for so with that being said guys here are all the tools you need now we can get started your wheel bearing links in the description as well as your new axle seal Now rear drums. So mine need to be replaced very soon. Um, I'm probably gonna order these. So um, one of the tricks to driving the drums off if you're having trouble is it has a hole right here for a screw. You can run a screw through there and then it'll push it against the face of the hub and pop the drum out. It's super handy. Um, a lot of Hondas have that as well. So if you're having trouble getting your drums off and you have drums and you have the same model truck, you can run a bolt through here just to show you guys what I was talking about, my drums are being stubborn. They're not wanting to come off just pulling them super easy. So I'm going to run. And you see that starts pushing it. See? Pop it right off. So that's a trick for getting these off if they're being super stubborn. Um, at the, I'll look up the thread pitch and of, the, of the bolt in these holes and let you guys know in the description. Um, also guys, all the parts and, and tools you'll need to do this job will also be linked in the description as I said before. So if you're looking for something, go ahead and check there. I'll have the Amazon links ready to go for you guys if you wanna do this job to your truck. Um, coming up in the near future, shocks and struts, bump stops, a bunch of good stuff. So let's pull these drums off. While you're back in here and you got your drums off, it's definitely good to check for your rear master cylinders. Um, I recently replaced the one on the other side. This one I'm going to replace soon as well as the um, brake shoes. They still have, these brake shoes last a long time, so they might look thin, but they last for a super long time. Um, so that's something I'll definitely look into replacing here soon. But for right now, they'll get the job done. Our main focus is these bearings for sure. So um, now what we have to do... So I'm going to pull the tire off the other side, get the drum off of the other side, and then we're going to open up the rear diff and we're going to drain the fluid. We are here on the other side of the truck. As you can see, the new um, master cylinder on this side, newer brake lines and stuff like that. Um, these brake lines are eventually going to get redone. Um, I just needed something in the meantime to get this because I'm planning on ordering, you know, new rear drums new rear axles and a whole bunch of parts for this truck um, I got a ton of plans for this truck um, if you guys want to know more about what I'm planning on it you should check out the garage update videos I go into more depth about everything we've done on this truck also if you want to see other work that I've done you can check out the suspension overhaul video where I replace sway bar links front wheel bearings front inner and outer tie rods um, and upper control arms as well as lower ball joints so with that being said while we're here we're just gonna you know clean everything up hit it with some hefty hefty spray brake clean all that dust off because now that the wheels off and the uh axles are exposed we are gonna now go hit the uh rear diff 
And that's usually where things, if they do get super interesting, get super interesting. So hopefully nothing gets crazy super interesting. <laughs> but, gotta do it. All right, gang gang. All right guys, so now we're here at the rear end of the truck. And what we need to do now in order to gain access to the C-clips and the carrier pin for the diff in order to remove the rear axles is we need to unbolt the rear diff cover. Now, as you can see, mine is pretty old and pretty crusty, so we might sandblast this and hit it with a coat of paint today. So, um, eventually the rear end out of this truck is going to get dropped down and just refinished and, and resurfaced. But for right now, we just need to replace the rear wheel bearing, so it's time to start cracking these bolts. Got my trusty Milwaukee 3 8 Okay. Now I'm bolts getting stuck. I'm gonna do the trusty smacking on the ground. That's how you do that. This one's longer than all the others, so it's important to note that. So the gear oil in this looks phenomenal, which is definitely a good sign. Okay guys, so now as you can see, I've removed the rear diff cover. Um, we got the old gasket still attached. So we're going to obviously be replacing this as well as cleaning up all these surfaces. We'll show that in a little bit. So right now in terms of the job that we're doing, what we need to do is we need to remove the carrier pin from the diff, which is right here. And the eight millimeter bolt that retains it is right there. So when you're doing this job, it's best to leave your truck in neutral so that you can rotate the drive shaft and get it so that the carrier bolt the, uh, the carrier pin and the retaining bolt kind of face down at an angle like that so when you pop the bolt you can just slide it out these right here these right here are the ends of our axles and this is the area in which the c-clips are going to pop out which retain the axles when we push them in after we remove the carrier pin so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to spray this all down clean it out so that you guys can see better and then we're going to pop that carrier pin bolt and remove that and then remove the carrier pin guys i'm getting carried away with my diff cover this is a mini little sandblaster i got my bucket of sand in here the hose goes in there hose goes in there and then air runs through sandblast it if you're interested in one of these i'll link it in the description Full disclosure, you get sand everywhere. Good, you get sand absolutely everywhere. But it takes a job that would take probably three to four hours of sandpaper. And granted, this is nowhere near perfect or nowhere near what I wanna do, but I only have an hour till the shop closes, so. Slight work. 
We're gonna take our eight mil to release our carrier pin bolt. All right. So we're gonna remove the carrier pin bolt as stated. So now it's loose. You can't take it all the way off with this. Your ratchet's gonna bounce off against the carrier pinion, bounce off, whatever you wanna say. So, you also need to grab your eight mil wrench. Now, you don't have to do this, obviously. We're all grown ass adults and we can do it however the frick we want. But, these is the exact order that they go in into the diff. And I specifically placed them out like that because this one that held in these was longer than all the other ones so you don't want to try to put that long one in one of the shorter holes you're going to end up snapping the head off so with that being said we're also going to take our eight mil carrier pin bolt and we are going to put it with the other ones so that we do not lose it so i'm going to continue to take this out until the bolt's all the way out obviously Okay, so this is what the carrier pin bolt likes, looks like when it's all taken out. So I'm gonna place that right in the middle here so I don't lose it. It's probably a special little part, very hard to find in any parts store. So now I can just come up to the top, my finger, loop, carrier pin comes right out. Ideally, I would not have dropped it in my drain pan, but that's nothing a little brake clean and some rags won't fix. There she is. We'll inspect this in just one second. Now that our carrier pin has been taken out and cleaned up, we can inspect it for any signs of wear or specific damage. This one looks pretty darn good. Time for our trusty magnets. So right now, we need to remove the C-clips. So what I'm gonna do is hold the camera in here. You just simply push the axle in. Did you see it pop out? And right there, is the c-clip you don't want to rotate your axles or you'll have trouble getting your carrier pin back in so what we'd want to do is without rotating it just very carefully pull the c-clip using a magnet sometimes they want to be a little bit stubborn but we will finagle it and okay not with that one we will finagle it and get it out of there right, so i pulled both of the c-clips out of the rear diff as you pop as you push the axles which are sitting right here when you have them installed you push them in here which as you saw from the last clip pops them out and exposes the c-clips the c-clips might take a little bit of finagling it also helps to have someone push in the other side to get them past to where you can just really hook them and get them out. Um, so now that those C-clips are out, carrier pins out, it's time to remove the old seal and the old bearing. Just where we get into the tools you'll need for this. And as you saw from the beginning, you do need a slide hammer and you can rent one from a parts store or you can buy one, gang gang. All right guys, so excuse the noise, but time sensitive. So a slide hammer set up with a bearing claw on it. We'll go over that in another video. But right now I'm gonna pry out the old axle seal right here. These are just press fit in. So eventually it'll come out. So we'll go over this in depth later, but basically the slide hammer is, this thing slides on here and is stopped by that. So we're gonna hook this claw onto the inner bearing and just yoink it out. Not the most sophisticated way to remove a bearing, but it's how you do these ones. So time to start yoinking. So after much effort, that is the old wheel bearing. So, we come over to the side I haven't done yet. This is the wheel bearing seat. This is what the wheel bearing is gonna press up against. So what you're gonna want is a bearing driver. 
Now, like I said in the beginning, all these will be linked in the descriptions, but here we go. Bearing driver, proper size for the new wheel bearing to drive it in. Now, when you're driving it in, you're gonna hear the sound change when it's all the way in, right? It's gonna, you're gonna hear like a, a thunk of it hitting the seat. So go ahead and slap it in and then just start tapping it in. All right, guys, so just to, you know, show you what I did without trying to film this with one hand is the bearing on there, tap it until you feel a solid thunk. You will 100% feel the difference when it's still being driven in to when it's seated. When it's seated, you'll feel it. It feels like you're smacking it against something solid and it'll stop moving. So now that the bearing is in there, we are going to go ahead and we are going to put the seal on. See, here's the old one. It was definitely damaged and bent. So, bloop. Okay, YouTube, so now we have our axles installed loosely on both sides. We have to put the C-clips back in. This one I've already started. So you can see that the carrier pin is what basically holds your axles in place. So this one's been pushed in, so we're gonna slide the C-clip into the groove and pop it, push it back against tight. So now the C-clip is back inside the gear. Now you can see we have our second slot exposed for our second C-clip. So just like we, we removed them, we're gonna install them. So this is the C-clip that I removed. This retains your axle. Please do not forget to put this back into your vehicle. So I can get my hand out of the way. See it slides right there, whoops. Rotated that one up. So I need my little magnet. Spin it around the axle. Shit. This may take a little bit of finagling. A little bit of finagling. Friggin' wrangling the finagling. Dangling my jangling. Ha ha. All right, so now you see the groove very clearly. You see it, the splines of the axle, the groove, the end of the axle shaft. C-clip around that groove it's in push it push it back outwards so now the c-clip is retained now our carrier pinion slide out, our carrier pin slid out the bottom we are going to do the same thing okay first we're going to clean all this off because the sandblasting sand got over there so we need to clean everything off carrier pin all good and clean so now just to help it along, I'm gonna take some of this grease, kind of just put some on here. So, greased up. Now, we're gonna go through the bottom with it. Now we need to have it lined up with this hole. So if you get into it, all right, so I guess another lesson real quick. So when you rotate the, the, I don't know if y'all saw any of that. Okay, look, so carrier pen, you can move the spider gears a little bit and get it to drop out. If you get it to just fall out like that, you're lined up perfectly. If you need to hold it, you can move the spider gears. It's hard for me to film this with one hand, but you need to go through the bottom spider gear up through the top spider gear and line up the bolt, our carrier pin retaining bolt that we took off earlier. This hole in the carrier pin needs to line up so that the bolt holds everything together. Otherwise your axle is gonna fly out while you're driving, ah. All right guys, so now you can see we have our carrier pin bolt back in loosely, finger tight so far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eight mil wrench and we are going to um, tighten that down to where we can get the socket on it and tighten it up for its final um, torque. So after this, it's really smooth sailing. We've got our C-clips in on our axles. Our carrier pin is keeping our axles tight inside the vehicle, retained by the C-clips. 
So at this point, our, our install of the, of the axle, rear axle bearings and the uh, um, rear axle seals is pretty much complete. What we have left to do is we're gonna tighten this bolt, like I said, till we can get a socket and fit the ratchet in there. We probably could now, but I um, wanna make sure. Um, tighten this down, the carrier pin will be reinstalled. Then it's gonna be time to clean up this gasket mating surface. Um, unfortunately, our uh, the gasket I wanted was not available today it's going to be coming into advance tomorrow so in order to drive the truck home tonight i'm just going to have to use some rtv and make a gasket and then put the the actual one on tomorrow which is kind of a pain but it is what it is you want to get that gasket so everything like i said i'll link all parts in description all the tools in the description so carrier pin installed we have to snug this down with the uh eight millimeter ratchet right here the vehicle's in neutral so i'm probably gonna end up rotating this yep so i'm gonna hold it all righty quick turn of the drive shaft make sure everything's operating how it should yeah Cool. All right, time to clean up this surface right here. Then I'll show you the fill procedure. Hey right, guys, so I took a, when you do this, if you do this with a whiz wheel, um, you'll want to use an old one, one that's not gonna remove material. It's just basically gonna polish the surface. So brake clean, spray it down with, uh, you know, brake clean, get it all clean, get it ready to take the new gasket. All right guys, here's my very roughly and rusted, pitted, sandblasted, and then hastily painted rear diff cover. By the way, I just wanna point out after all this is done, I will have done this job in three hours, including sandblasting and painting and including breaking my old shitty slide hammer and having to go run and buy a new one, which took about 45 minutes. So now that I have the carrier pin back installed and everything's tightened and torqued, it's time to put a gasket maker on this and install the rear diff cover before we do the fluid change. So now I'm gonna be using RTV because like I said, the gasket I needed was not available. I thought it would be, highly surprised it isn't, but I'll be picking it up tomorrow. So for tonight to get home, unfortunately, we're gonna have to RTV this without using the proper gasket, but this will work. I'm, I've so many trucks don't have a gasket they take rtv from the factory especially a lot of hondas on their front you know front setups and things like that so we're gonna go ahead and use some gasket maker freshly clean and we're going to uh install this so see you soon all right guys so i got the rear diff cover loosely mounted and according to the factory service manual, the torque spec for these rear diff bolts are 30 foot pounds. So we are going to put our 3 8 Milwaukee impact on the lowest clutch setting. And we're just gonna snug them down to the first click of the anvil. And then we are going to do a crisscross pattern all the way around to ensure even sealing. And then we are going to torque them to the factory specification. So rear wheel bearings are in. Now we are going to torque down our cover to spec, 30 foot pounds. We're gonna go torque down our rear diff cover and I have two options here. I have the ATD torque wrench, which will be linked in the description. And I can't really link Matco tools 
but this is their 3 8 digital torque adapter and this thing is amazing for, i use it for engine work all the time i'll film a separate video on this if you want to see more on this tool go to my uh, toolbox tour video this thing's awesome but because we can fit our regular torque wrench on it it's just going to be faster and easier to do it to this because it looks like it's about a storm and the shop closes in seven minutes gang gang so uh, so I have my torque wrench at the 30 foot pounds and we are going to start in sequence. First one torqued. 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 Double check on all the other ones, make sure it's clicking. Okay, all of these are torqued to factory specification, 30 foot pounds. Service manual says the new um, standard is 75W90 synthetic gear oil. So I'm gonna be throwing this in there and we can do it till it spills out of the fill cap or we can fill it to the spec, the factory spec of from the manual, which I've read is three quarts. I've also read things about two quarts, so I'm gonna look it up on all data and let you guys know what all data says. Hey guys, so I've removed my fill plug and now I'm simply filling up with the proper gear oil, full mm. synthetic 75W90. We're gonna fill until we see it start to spill out of the fill plug and then we'll know we're at the proper level. And I will let you guys know how much it took. All right guys, so we got our spillage from the side plug, which means we are full. But yeah, now it's time to throw in the uh, fill plug and job done.